Have you ever wondered why people act the way they do in groups or how our thoughts and feelings are shaped by those around us? These are the questions at the heart of social psychology. This field of study delves into the fascinating interplay between individuals and their social world. Throughout this comprehensive course, we will embark on a journey to unravel the complexities of human social behavior. We will explore how our perceptions, attitudes and actions are influenced by the social tapestry of our lives. From the subtle ways we conform to group norms to the powerful influence of authority figures, we will uncover the hidden forces that shape our social reality. Join me as we delve into the captivating realm of social psychology and gain a deeper understanding of ourselves and the world around us. The social psychology at its core is the scientific study of how individuals think, feel and behave in social situations. It examines the dynamic relationship between individuals and their social environment, exploring how these interactions influence our thoughts, emotions and actions. By employing scientific methods, social psychologists strive to uncover the underlying principles that govern social behavior. They conduct experiments, gather data and analyze patterns to understand the complexities of human social interaction. But what sets social psychology apart from other branches of psychology? Unlike clinical psychology, which focuses on diagnosing and treating mental disorders, social psychology examines the psychological processes that are common to all individuals in social contexts. Social psychology delves into the social factors that influence our thoughts, feelings and behaviours, regardless of individual differences in personality or mental health. While cognitive psychology explores mental processes such as memory, attention and problem solving, social psychology investigates how these processes are influenced by social factors. For instance, social psychologists might study how the presence of others affects our performance on a task, or how our memories can be distorted by social pressure. By understanding these social influences, we can gain a deeper appreciation for the power of the social world in shaping our experiences. Social psychology provides a unique lens through which we can examine the complexities of human behavior in social situations. It helps us understand why we conform to group norms, why we obey authority figures, and how our attitudes are shaped by our social interactions. Through its scientific approach, Social psychology provides valuable insights into the human condition. The roots of social psychology can be traced back to the late 19th century, with the work of pioneering thinkers such as Gustave Le Bon and Norman Triplett. Le Bon's study of crowd behaviour laid the groundwork for understanding the dynamics of groups, while Triplett's research on social facilitation demonstrated how the presence of others can enhance performance. However, it was in the mid-20th century that social psychology truly emerged as a distinct and influential field. The horrors of World War II had a profound impact on the field, leading researchers to investigate the social and psychological factors that contribute to prejudice, obedience and aggression. This period saw the emergence of groundbreaking studies that continue to shape our understanding of human social behaviour. Imagine walking into a crowded room, instantly you're bombarded with sights, sounds and a whirlwind of social information. Our brains are wired to make sense of this complex social world. Social perception is the process by which we form impressions of others and interpret their behaviour. It's like piecing together a puzzle using verbal and non-verbal cues to understand those around us. We pay attention to facial expressions, body language, tone of voice and even subtle gestures. These cues provide valuable insights into people's emotions, intentions and personalities. Our survival as a social species has long depended on our ability to accurately decode these social signals. First impressions matter. Within milliseconds, we form initial judgments about others based on limited information. These judgments, while often unconscious, can have a lasting impact on our perceptions and interactions. Physical appearance, clothing choices and even names can influence our initial impressions. However, first impressions are not always accurate. Stereotypes and biases can cloud our judgment, leading to unfair or misleading perceptions. Stereotypes are generalised beliefs about groups of people, while biases are preconceived notions that influence our attitudes and behaviours. 
It's essential to recognize and challenge these cognitive shortcuts to form more objective and fair impressions. Why do people do what they do? Attribution theory seeks to explain how we attribute causes to our own and others' behavior. We constantly try to make sense of the world around us, seeking explanations for the actions we observe. According to this theory, we attribute behavior to either internal or external factors. Internal attributions focus on personal traits, abilities or dispositions. For example, we might attribute a colleague's success to their intelligence or work ethic. On the other hand, external attributions emphasize situational factors such as luck, social pressure or environmental influences. Section 4. Navigating biases in our judgments. While attribution theory provides a framework for understanding how we explain behavior, our judgments are not always free from bias. The fundamental attribution error, a pervasive bias, describes our tendency to overemphasize internal factors when explaining others' behavior, while underestimating the role of situational influences. For instance, if someone cuts us off in traffic, we're more likely to assume they're a reckless driver than to consider external factors like a medical emergency. Interestingly, when it comes to explaining our own behavior, we often exhibit a self-serving bias. We tend to attribute our successes to internal factors, such as our abilities or efforts, while blaming our failures on external circumstances, protecting our self-esteem. Understanding these biases is crucial for developing more accurate and empathetic social perceptions. Section 1. The Power of Conformity we are social creatures, inherently drawn to belonging and acceptance within groups. This deep-seated need to fit in can have a powerful influence on our behaviour, leading us to conform to group norms, even when they conflict with our own judgments. Conformity refers to the tendency to align our thoughts, feelings and behaviours with those of others. Think about a time you laughed at a joke you didn't find funny simply because everyone else was laughing. This is a subtle example of conformity in action. We conform for various reasons, to avoid social rejection, to gain information, or because we genuinely believe the group is correct. Understanding the forces that drive conformity is essential for navigating social situations and recognizing when group pressure might be influencing our actions. Section two, conforming to social norms. In the 1950s, social psychologist Solomon Ash conducted groundbreaking experiments that shed light on the power of conformity. In his classic conformity experiments, participants were asked to judge the lengths of lines. The task was simple, yet the results were astonishing. When confronted with a unanimous group giving the wrong answer, participants often conformed, doubting their own perceptions. Ash's research revealed that conformity is more likely when the group is unanimous, when the task is ambiguous, and when individuals are uncertain of their own judgments. These findings highlight the profound influence of social pressure on our thoughts and behaviors, even in straightforward situations. Conformity can be both beneficial and detrimental. It can promote social harmony and cooperation, but also lead to the suppression of individual thought and the acceptance of harmful norms. Section 3. Obedience to authority. Imagine being ordered to administer painful electric shocks to another person. Would you obey? This scenario might seem far-fetched, but it was the basis of a groundbreaking series of experiments. This unsettling question lies at the heart of Stanley Milgram's obedience experiments conducted in the 1960s. Milgram, a psychologist at Yale University, sought to understand how far people would go in obeying an instruction if it involved harming another person. Milgram's research explored the limits of obedience to authority, revealing the unsettling truth about our willingness to comply with directives, even those that violate our moral principles. His experiments showed that ordinary people could commit extraordinary acts of cruelty when instructed by an authority figure. In his experiments, participants were instructed to deliver increasingly intense electric shocks to a learner, who was actually an actor, for every wrong answer. The shocks were fake, but the participants believed they were real. Despite the learner's cries of pain, a surprising majority of participants continued to obey the experimenter's commands to administer higher shocks. This demonstrated the powerful impact of authority on human behavior. Milgram's findings highlighted the powerful influence of authority figures on our behavior. 
People tend to follow orders from those they perceive as legitimate authorities, even when it conflicts with their personal conscience. Factors that contribute to obedience include the perceived legitimacy of the authority figure, the setting of the experiment, and the presence of institutional support. The proximity of the victim, which can affect the level of empathy felt by the participant, and the presence of dissenting voices, which can encourage individuals to question and resist authority. Understanding the dynamics of obedience is crucial for recognizing and resisting unethical or harmful directives. By studying these factors, we can better prepare ourselves to stand up against wrongful authority and make ethical decisions. Section 4. The Dynamics of Groupthink Groups play a significant role in our lives, providing a sense of belonging, support and shared identity. However, group decision-making can sometimes be flawed, leading to poor judgments and negative outcomes. Groupthink is a phenomenon that occurs when the desire for group harmony overrides critical thinking and rational decision-making. In groupthink scenarios, groups may suppress dissenting opinions, overestimate their own abilities and make risky or ill-informed decisions. Factors that contribute to groupthink include group cohesiveness, insulation from outside opinions and directive leadership. The consequences of groupthink can be severe, ranging from poor business decisions to political scandals. By understanding the dynamics of groupthink, we can foster more critical and effective group decision-making processes, encouraging dissent, diversity of thought and open communication. Attitudes. These are our evaluations of people, objects and ideas. They colour our perceptions and shape our actions. Think of them as mental shortcuts that help us navigate the complexities of the social world. But what exactly are attitudes and how do they form? Attitudes have three core components, affective, behavioural and cognitive. The affective component refers to our emotional reactions or feelings towards something. Do we feel happy, sad, angry or disgusted? The behavioural component involves our actions or tendencies to act in a certain way. Do we approach or avoid, support or oppose? Lastly, the cognitive component encompasses our thoughts, beliefs and knowledge about the attitude object. What do we think or believe about it? Our attitudes are not formed in a vacuum. They are shaped by a multitude of factors, including our upbringing, culture, personal experiences and social interactions. One powerful influence on attitude formation is social learning theory. This theory suggests that we learn attitudes by observing others, particularly those we admire or identify with, such as parents, peers or role models. When we see someone expressing a particular attitude and being rewarded for it, we are more likely to adopt that attitude ourselves. Conversely, if we observe someone being punished for an attitude, we are less likely to internalise it. Social learning plays a crucial role in shaping our attitudes from a young age. As we interact with our social world, we constantly observe and absorb attitudes from those around us. It seems logical to assume that our attitudes directly predict our behaviour. After all, if we feel strongly about something, it should naturally influence the way we act, right? If we have a positive attitude towards something, we should be more likely to act favourably towards it, right? For example, if we love a particular hobby, we would spend more time engaging in it. While this seems intuitive, the relationship between attitudes and behaviour is far more complex than it appears. Our actions are not always a direct reflection of our attitudes. One influential theory that explains this complex relationship is cognitive dissonance theory, proposed by Leon Festinger. This theory has been pivotal in understanding the nuances of human psychology. This theory suggests that we strive for consistency between our attitudes and our behaviours. We have an inherent desire to align our actions with our beliefs. When we hold conflicting attitudes or when our actions contradict our beliefs, we experience a state of cognitive dissonance, which is an uncomfortable feeling of psychological tension. This tension can be quite distressing and motivates us to seek resolution. To reduce this dissonance, we may change our attitudes or our behaviours to align them. This process can involve significant introspection and adjustment. For instance, if we believe in environmental protection but engage in behaviours that harm the environment, we might experience cognitive dissonance. 
This internal conflict can be a powerful motivator for change. To resolve this, we might change our behavior to be more eco-friendly, or we might rationalize our harmful actions downplaying their environmental impact. This rationalization helps us to maintain a sense of internal consistency, even if it means bending our beliefs slightly. Ultimately, understanding the intricate link between attitudes and behavior can help us make more conscious decisions and foster personal growth. By recognizing the factors that influence our actions, we can strive to live more authentically and in harmony with our true values. Persuasion, the art of influencing attitudes and behaviors, is a pervasive force in our lives. From advertising campaigns to political speeches, we are constantly bombarded with messages designed to sway our opinions and actions. But how does persuasion work? According to the elaboration likelihood model, persuasion can occur through two primary routes, central and peripheral. The central route relies on thoughtful consideration of the message's content and arguments. It requires effortful processing and is more likely to lead to lasting attitude change. On the other hand, the peripheral route involves focusing on superficial cues, such as the attractiveness of the speaker or the emotional appeal of the message. It requires less cognitive effort, but often results in temporary or superficial attitude change. Understanding the mechanisms of persuasion can empower us to become more discerning consumers of information, recognizing persuasive techniques and critically evaluating the messages we encounter. Social psychology is not just an academic pursuit confined to textbooks and laboratories. Its principles are woven into the fabric of our daily lives, shaping our interactions, decisions and understanding of the social world. From the subtle ways we conform to social norms to the persuasive techniques we encounter in advertising, social psychology is all around us. Think about the last time you went shopping. Did you notice how product placement or the behavior of other shoppers influenced your choices? Or consider the role of social influence in our relationships. We are more likely to befriend those who are similar to us, and our perceptions of others are often shaped by our social groups. Social psychology provides a framework for understanding these everyday phenomena, shedding light on the hidden forces that shape our social reality. By recognizing these principles in action, we can become more conscious and informed participants in our own social worlds. Marketing and politics are two domains where the principles of social psychology are harnessed to influence attitudes and behaviors on a large scale. Advertisers utilize techniques rooted in social proof, scarcity, and authority to persuade consumers to purchase products or services. Political campaigns leverage social identity, framing effects, and emotional appeals to sway voters' opinions. For instance, an advertisement might feature testimonials from satisfied customers, social proof, create a sense of urgency by highlighting limited time offers, scarcity, or enlist a celebrity endorser to enhance credibility, authority. Similarly, political campaigns often emphasize shared values and group identity to mobilize supporters, frame issues in a way that resonates with target audiences, and evoke strong emotions to create a sense of urgency or enthusiasm. By understanding the psychological principles underlying these persuasive techniques, we can become more critical consumers of marketing messages and more informed participants in the political process. Section 3. Navigating the social dynamics of leadership. Leadership, an essential aspect of social interaction, relies heavily on principles of social psychology. Effective leaders understand the importance of group dynamics, motivation and communication in inspiring and guiding others. They employ strategies to foster teamwork, resolve conflicts and create a positive and productive work environment. For example, transformational leaders inspire and motivate followers by articulating a clear vision, setting high expectations and providing support and encouragement. They foster a sense of shared purpose and empower individuals to contribute their unique talents. On the other hand, transactional leaders focus on maintaining order and control, setting clear goals and rewarding or punishing behavior accordingly. Both leadership styles can be effective depending on the context and the needs of the group. Social psychology provides insights into the factors that contribute to effective leadership, helping individuals develop the skills and strategies to lead effectively in various social settings. Section 4. Social Psychology in the Digital Age – Understanding Our Online Selves 
The rise of the digital age with its pervasive social media platforms and online interactions has created new frontiers for social psychological research and application. These platforms have become integral to our daily lives, influencing how we perceive ourselves and others. Social media has fundamentally altered the way we communicate, form relationships and present ourselves to the world. The immediacy and reach of these platforms mean that our interactions are no longer confined by geographical boundaries, allowing us to connect with a global audience. From online identity management to the spread of misinformation, social psychology provides a valuable lens through which to understand the complexities of our online lives. It helps us explore how we curate our online personas and the impact of digital misinformation on public opinion and behaviour. For instance, social comparison theory, which suggests that we evaluate ourselves in relation to others, has taken on new dimensions in the age of social media. The constant exposure to others' highlight reels can significantly affect our self-esteem and mental health. The curated perfection often presented on these platforms can lead to upward social comparison making us feel inadequate or envious. This phenomenon can contribute to feelings of depression and anxiety as we constantly measure our lives against seemingly flawless portrayals. Additionally, the anonymity and reduced social cues of online interactions can disinhibit behavior, leading to increased incivility or cyberbullying. The lack of face-to-face -face interaction often emboldens individuals to say things they wouldn't in person, exacerbating online hostility. Social psychology helps us navigate these challenges by providing insights into the psychological processes underlying online behaviour, promoting more mindful and responsible digital citizenship. By understanding these dynamics, we can foster healthier online communities and encourage positive digital interactions. Section 1. Key Takeaways – The Enduring Lessons of Social Psychology as our exploration of social psychology comes to a close, let's take a moment to reflect on the key insights we've uncovered. We've journeyed through the fascinating landscape of human social behavior, from the subtle ways we perceive and judge others to the profound influence of groups and authority figures. We've learned that our social world is not a passive backdrop, but an active force that shapes our thoughts, emotions, and actions. From the power of first impressions to the dynamics of persuasion, Social psychology provides a framework for understanding the hidden forces that influence our everyday lives. Remember, we are all social animals, wired for connection, belonging and influence. By recognising the principles of social psychology in action, we can become more conscious and informed participants in our own social world. In today's rapidly changing world marked by globalization, technological advancements and social upheaval, the insights of social psychology are more relevant than ever. As we navigate the complexities of intercultural communication, the challenges of online social interaction and the ever-evolving landscape of social influence, a deep understanding of human social behavior is essential. Social psychology equips us with the tools to understand prejudice and discrimination to promote cooperation and conflict resolution, and to create more just and equitable societies. By embracing the principles of empathy, critical thinking and social responsibility, we can harness the power of social psychology to create a more harmonious and fulfilling social experience for ourselves and future generations. Let us venture forth with a newfound appreciation for the intricacies of human social behavior using the lessons we've learned to navigate the complexities of our social world with greater understanding, compassion and wisdom.